if you look at the profit performance of companies listed on the JSC over the last 15 years, about 80% of their variability in profit performance is explained by economic growth. The economy really matters to the performance of South African companies. It's explained by a range of inputs, uh, not least of which is industrial concentration, which I'll come back to. Uh, that this panel is about talking about the next three years, uh, we can probably be sure that we will be wrong. Um, looking forward, even six months right now is a tough task. If you, if you go back to the start of this year and you remember what forecasts looked like in terms of interest rate moves, economic growth and currency, the proposal was no interest rate moves, 3.5% economic growth and the RAND would be 10 uh, well, the RAND's got up to 12 currency, uh, uh, interest rates have moved up, and I think we will be very lucky to get 2% economic growth this year. I know that the governor uh, of the Reserve Bank has been in the business of trying to suggest that the economy isn't in recession. This is probably something I don't want to go on record, uh, but you know, here I am on record. I think we are in recession, and I'd be surprised if we aren't, and if we aren't in recession, then it's really a decimal place uh, that separates the current environment between negative growth. Uh, the other panelists have captured, uh, I think, my overarching concern. And my overarching concern is that we're in a Kodak moment. We are fast asleep at the wheel. Uh, other countries are taking our lunch. Um, I put onto my Twitter feed this morning, when will we have the wake up moment? When will we realize that the long term is now and that we've got into the practice of you know, imagining that there's some magic ingredient that will jump out the cupboard on a Thursday afternoon and transform South Africa into 6% growth? In that so my, my complaint, my observation is more frustration than criticism. Um, because I think the 6% is easily uh, within our reach, if not a bigger number. And what do we need to do? Well, infrastructural development is an imperative. Uh, finding neighbors, connecting to the fastest growing region in the world, uh, turning our cities into wireless economies uh, would be a very powerful enabler. And uh, breaking up industrial oligopoly, which is a massive scar on our economic landscape that we haven't uh, seriously addressed. It's one of the biggest inhibitors to new company formation and to job growth. Uh, pause for breath, have coffee, and then get on with the afternoon's business of 6% growth. 6% growth is a lovely policy proposal. It's not an economic reality. And uh, as I made the point uh, about South Africa's economic growth, if you look over the last 20 years, we've, uh, we've undergone a really important structural adjustment which is to become integrated with the world economy. But the correlation of South Africa's economic growth with global economic growth over the last 20 years is 0 0.86. I know that number exactly because I have some fun saying, you know, dial 086 world economic growth if you want to know what South Africa's growth prospect looks like. But as I was also made the point that we seem to be falling away from that very high correlation. I think, you know, people in this room will be intimate with understanding what those headwinds are. The structure of the South African economy puts us in place for, we're in the business of 3% growth. Um, I don't think bold policy proposals can write about we're in the business of three. They have to write about we're in the business of six. But there's a yawning difference between policy and reality. Uh, great policy is lovely. You have to convert it into reality. Uh, the, uh, you made reference to the Chinese uh, policy documents. Uh, th what version are they in now? 12th? 12th, 12th, 12th version plan. of their five-year plan. China what I love China. about this is, first, it's a five-year plan. So you can rest assured that there is another policy document coming in five years. And there's nothing more assuring to business than certainty about you know, when they can expect a, a review. In China, every five years. The second point to make is that it's 70 pages in yes. something like that. Yes. It's a 70 page document. We've taken 440 pages. Uh, they're 20 or 30 times the size of our economy. So man, we've made this complicated. If I could say very quickly the point about the industrial yes, oligopoly. Sorry, go ahead. Um, 
um, to me, this is a great frustration because it, it seems that private sector in South Africa, in fact, both sides of this conversation have become really expert at saying what the other should do. Mm. Um, it might be a moment for you know, deep introspection. And the industrial structure in South Africa is, I would challenge you to name uh, more than three or four industries which are highly competed and highly fragmented. Overwhelmingly, the commanding heights of South Africa's industrial landscape are captured by industries with one, two, maybe three firms. And you see this translating into huge profit uh, margins that are amongst the highest in the world. It means that small firms aren't born. When small firms are born that become a threat, they're bought. And the single biggest engine of job creation is small businesses, not large companies. So before I come to now, just to pick up on that point. So given the difficult conditions business faces, it's very unlikely the turkeys are going to vote for Christmas, right? Yeah. Very unlikely that industry in South Africa is going to suddenly say, we've built up these concentrations of market share over decades, and we now want to sort of start breaking it up. And the irony, of course, is that our, we have many competitive companies that have come out of that oligopoly and have gone around the world very successfully. So Absolutely. that's a complication.